You started at the wrong fucking time. It's the final countdown. Do, 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 do. Wrong song. Welcome to Crowd Gamer, uh, Crowdgate Game of Thrones, everybody. That was our terrible, not rehearsed intro, as you probably uh, very. I told you both. I specifically told you both <laughs> not to try that. It was never going to work. Started a bit too late. No it would offense. be difficult to do that with no with no um, rehearsal. If you're sat in the same room, let alone if you're sat ten thousand fucking miles away, <laughs> ridiculous. I'd <sighs> rather live with uh, shame than regret. <laughs> I was was worth a try. Anyway, well, yeah. you've got shame and about. regret now. This is ridiculous. You've got both. <laughs> Ongoing shit show. That is not just my show, but also the skeptosphere on YouTube. Uh, right, so when last we left off with this ridiculous ongoing saga, the continuing story of uh, a kraut that's gone to the dogs, we uh, that's a Muppet show shout out. Wow, another deep cut for um, people over the age of, uh, um, of 30. <laughs> I'm on a roll this week. Anyway, uh, Kevin and I wow. are going to hang are you out. you going to do a fucking Buddy Holly reference next? What are you, where are you going with this? <laughs> anyway. Um, Kevin and I, this is where we left off, and then we're going to bring Tim in because he's our doxing ethicist. But where we left off was at that point, Kevin and I had both agreed there was not sufficient evidence that Kraut or Jeff were involved in any kind of doxing. I mean, come on, we really gave these guys the benefit of the doubt, right? And then overwhelming evidence came out, and we talked about it again and said, hey, you know what? This looks dodgy. They're admitting to things. But it kind of has exploded even beyond that, Jeff admitting to lying and everything else. But before we get into that drama, just wanted to wet your whistle a bit for what's coming up. First thing we're going to talk about is um, we brought on our, our progressive community uh, doxing ethicist, uh, Tim. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I got this moniker. You keep saying this over and over again. Like, <laughs> Tim is the doxing uh, ethicist. I'm, I'm just a guy who has some random opinion, I, I guess. Well, that. You, you studied under the great Slavinsky, the, uh, the ethicist at uh, Harvard. That's true. The doxing efficacist, efficacist. See, that's how much of an expert I am. I say also, ethicist well, like efficacist. Yeah, you fucking nailed that, bro. Um, yep. And also, um, you you have the honor of being the very first guest on the Kevin or the Christian Kev Happy Hour Fun Time Jamboree or whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, that one. Is this an ongoing? Is this like some kind of ongoing show of some kind? Yes, it's a. We're Sorry, doing, I. We, 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 which I was going to be. About twice a month we were planning, but we've, this is our third show in five fucking days now, which is ridiculous. That shows you how um, in tune the brain trust is. I don't even know if this is a show. I'm like, what is this thing? <laughs> Some brain trust. And yet you wanted to do fucking cross-continental fucking acapella music that you hadn't rehearsed. You people are mental. I love you. Obviously, our hive mind is not in sync because our music was completely out. <laughs> Exactly. Gotta work it, on that. it was timed in my ear. It was timed for me. <laughs> mm. Anyways, I've completely right, lost track so, of what um, was being talked about, so go on. Well, yeah, exactly. You're you. supposed to be the German in the room. Where's the fucking efficiency, it's... Christy? Come on now. <laughs> uh, I've got two hyperactive kids in a classroom um, who just sort of like the sugar from their cereals hit their Te system. Technically, we're both grown adults. But that's technical, frankly. I only just woke up, so this is me at my mellowest. Oh. So later in the day, <laughs> man, I'm going to be hyper. So I probably have to have a nap. All right. After after four espressos, Tim, really, that's when he turns on the record for the camera. The bear that's mug. This is coincidental, by the way. Like People kept saying, why do you have a mug of bearing? I'm like, this is just a mug. I just should, bought it. The I didn't... Shrine. <laughs> There's a shrine to bearing these bedrooms. It's, it's quite something to behold. That was entirely accidental. All right, go on. All right. It's about the docs, doxing, whether it's okay to dox, what can you dox, what's not a dox. Should we not, should we not try and explain the basic there. outline of the actual drama first before we get into That's this. what I did if you were paying attention instead of reading the chat, Kev. I don't pay attention to anything. I don't pay attention to myself, for fuck's sake. It's embarrassing. Right. I, want to get, mm. I want to get Tim's opinion. On a few things. Now, first of all, if we can, I put this together. I want to see, Tim, if you think it's, it covers the basics. But it seems to me that there are two kinds of docs or documentation that we're really talking about people can possibly release. The first is, or move around, for instance, as maybe a better way of saying it. 
The first is information that you can just find by doing a Google search because the people have put stuff up that self postings, self publications, promotions, um, news reports, social media stuff, or their opinions, and their Facebook things that they make public. But then there's information that you have to go looking for for some reason. There has to be sort of a motivation beyond just typing their name to see, you know, to find their channel in, in, um, in Google and then coming across other things as well. And that's like going to public records, digging through posts from years ago or all the counts that they had to see what they posted in the past, um, hacked info. And all of this means, you know, like stuff that isn't part of your public persona. And even stuff that had been released in, in data dumps, like passwords, usernames, old addresses, or financial information. So would you say that that kind of covers the two types of, or the types of information that people could release uh, and to be called, um, possibly called, your docs? I think so. Where do you get this information from? Like, what's your source? My head. My thinker. Ah. Ah, OK, your brain. That's a good source. Me just, me just being sensible, like just sort of well, polarizing. It's a little bit tricky because a lot of people deny that anything that is public or has been put out by something is a dox of any kind. Like, for example, like if somebody put their address on, I don't know, an about page or something, um, a lot of people just say, that's not a dox, that's an address. It's just an address. But it's a dox or whatever when somebody hunts it down, looks it up, and then leaks it. But I would say, to me, it's the difference between like, like, okay, the thing about this debate, which is really annoying, is people act like the word docs has these magical qualities um, when it comes to morality. So basically, like, if you do something sleazy and dodgy, but it's not technically, quote unquote, a dox, that means it's morally and ethically sound. And I don't really think it works that way. You know, something can be, uh, perhaps legal and not quote unquote a dox and still be a horrible shitty intimidation tactic and a horrible thing that you are doing so i think if somebody puts their address on an about page they they may naively put it on there without expecting like oh somebody who hates me or somebody who doesn't like me is going to like screenshot this address and then you know spread it all over the internet to all of their trolls and say this is this fucking guy's address and then when i try to say that's a shitty thing to do you know, or maybe even say that's a dox or whatever. They're like, aha, technically it's not a dox, which means it's not a bad thing to do. So you can't get annoyed about it. And that's the thing that annoys me about this debate. Like the word dox is not a magical word whereby if something's a dox, it's the most evil thing in the entire fucking world. And if it's not a dox, it's just magically fine. It's just something that, you know, there's no problems with it. It's not a dox. Because just because something is legal and not a dox doesn't mean it's not like a horrible intimidation tactic or a sleazy way of going about your business, you know? So people will say like, oh, you know, information was public. You know, it was public, so it couldn't possibly be a dox. As if that is some kind of catch-all argument as to the ethics and morality of an action, and I don't think it is, you know? So yeah, that's fighting fine. about what a dox is, is just, it always gets into this, it always gets into the minutiae of a dox. That's not a dox, Tim, so it's fine. And it's like, well, who no, decided? Not, like, say, not you, I'm say saying like this. Right. No, I'm saying the debate goes that way. I'm not saying you're right. saying that. I'm saying like whenever I get into this topic, it always ends up like what is or is not a dox. Like that is the defining factor in right or wrong. Anyways, that's all. Kevin, you were going to say Kevin. Something? Yeah. So, uh, before Tim so really interrupted me. It's disgraceful. <laughs> um, uh, I, the, uh, a point I was going to raise that it's not just whether the information is public, it seems to me. It's if it, even if it's public, or say, for instance, with the uh, Coach Red Pill thing, it was on his Patreon page for patrons to see. No, that's mm. fine, but that's really meant to be for a close-knit group of people who aren't enemies of his. Even though technically an enemy could, and indeed did, uh, sign up to his Patreon and get that information, clearly broadcasting that to a wider audience who it's not meant for is a dox, even though technically it's publicly available material so it's if you spread it to like a way larger audience than it's clearly intended for that's a fucking dox and it's the the minutiae like you say of whether it's a dox or not reminds me of this ridiculous thing when milo in the whole you know uh, advocacy of pedophilia thing trying to define oh it's not technically pedophilia it's a hemophilia as if <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. <laughs> that's you a good guys, analogy. It's, like, it's like you're trying to gaslight people by saying oh no that's not what you think that is 
yes it is it's a fucking ducks and yes it is it's fucking raping children it doesn't matter what you want to fucking call it it is what it is anyway continue it's a it's it's a semantics <laughs> argument you know because yeah. um because then if i was like one of the annoying people on the internet kevin i'd be like, be like actually like it you know he no he can't be um the internet cannot be held responsible for what they do with information that he puts on his Patreon or whatever, and that's not a dox. And then I would say, well, it's kind of like publicizing a dox. And then they'd be like, it's not a dox, so it couldn't possibly be publicizing or spreading a dox. And then I'm like, well, okay, if it's not spreading a dox, it's doing something douchey with somebody's information. Yeah, I mean, well, that seems kind of airtight. It's doing yeah. a dick move with someone's information. How's that? Ah, but it's not a dox, you see. <laughs> These are the conversations I have every day. Well, but I can I jump in here? Well, I was sorry, just... but I'm going to interrupt you, Kevin, and just assume oh, yeah, some ahead. dominance on my own show. <laughs> Someone was like, <laughs> why do you keep letting Kevin talk? It's not the patriarchy around here. This is fucking <laughs> awesome. two, two versus talking, one. Talking about? <laughs> when you guys were talking, it seemed there's a lot, obviously, that ends up being mediated through the intention of the person looking at the information. But I do think that there is some merit to the idea that some information, I would make the case that if you are in a newspaper, that if I share that with somebody else, that's not doxing you. It's in a newspaper. It's not any way kind of confidential information and that I had to go looking to find. Same thing with you know anything I've ever published, my articles or whatever else, um, and um, things you put on Twitter. You know, I don't think that that would count as doxing. It might be embarrassing. People can save it. But if they save it and, and retain it, that's not a dox. And there are also, on the other side, there are categories like um, sharing people's passwords and usernames, um, their financial information, their home address, I would say, falls into, obviously, um, a category of information that really has no purpose other than us or menace that person. So I think that there's there are two kinds of information. This is Jeff Holliday's ironic um, defense was that the the information was just already on the internet, and they they sort of put it into one place, but it didn't contain anything like um, I don't I don't know if like the address is is put up there or whatever else. But the what Jeff's point was was um, things like the um, article that was written by Coach Redpill. He, he put it up there under his own account name. He associated with his YouTube page. Now, if Jeff didn't make this argument. It would have been a good argument for him to make, but he didn't make it. Um, but the, the fact is that that kind of citing that when he attaches it to his YouTube channel, well, that's clearly not a dox. Do you think that that argument has any merit or good points or what are its deficiencies? What, me? Or Kevin? You know, I, I cut Kevin off, so maybe start with Kevin. <laughs> No, Tim can go. I'm eating. <laughs> He's busy. Well, I actually, like, instead of answering it myself, I mean, I prefer to answer that with a question, which is just, is the fact that something is or is not a dox, like a, a massive moral and ethical modifier? Because I also know people say doxing is a legal concept. You know, doxing is something that is illegal so if it's not doxing you would get away with it in a court of law and that makes it okay if somehow so i would ask um perhaps put it back to christy like do you think the the word doxing is like the the core modifier of the ethics or standards because for me i see the ethic the ethics and morals of, of particular actions on kind of like a spectrum and i don't nest enough maybe that's too nuanced or whatever yeah. but yeah. But I don't see it as like there's a cutoff point where now it's a dock, so it's wrong. And ch and yeah. before that, it was all fine. It's not like a binary. It's like it's like gender. It's a spectrum. I just uh, I just offended a ton of people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was just gonna. I, I, I if I can jump in. Um, I think Go. it's relevant to the to the point of Jeff um, Holiday's defense of himself. Um, I mentioned briefly off air, but it's it's worth bringing up again. The um. That uh, the the show that me and Christy did on um, her quote unquote doxing, which wasn't actually a doxing uh, at all, of um, Bearing, uh, the when we did that live show showing how Bearing was full of fucking shit and making stuff up, um, Bearing was on a live stream watching our live stream, which was being hosted on Jeff Holiday's channel. 
And so they were watching. Streamception. Indeed. And they were watching our stream in that stream um, and trying to refute the evidence, which they couldn't because it's pretty fucking airtight. Anyway, um, yeah, in that stream, and in, in, so in the refute it, sorry, when when they couldn't refute it, they sent trolls in to say really homophobic things about Jenny McCarthy or McCarthy, sorry, Jenny McCarthy. Jenny Jenny I got McDermott. really distracted by this gunning uh, car in my, in my. Yeah, and actually, there's a video on my channel. Fuck it, I might as well plug it, uh, which uh, shows you uh, uh, the uh, I've got the film and I edited uh, the to the what you call it the the chat, um, which was recorded, and um, you can see the. Horrific things that uh, both Jeff Holiday and Bearings fans were saying. Incredibly homophobic, sexist shit, and transphobic, of course. Anyway, in that stream, uh, the things that, the, even the things that, uh, that they were accusing uh, Christie of, which she wasn't fucking guilty of, but even if she were guilty of, would have been less heinous than the things that Jeff Holiday did. And we know he did. We know that he was involved in. Um, and yet, Jeff doesn't seem to see the ridiculousness of his hosting bearing to make that allegation, and yet he's now been doing much worse, and he's trying to defend it using the same criteria, if that makes sense. It's it's ridiculous, and that's, that goes to Tim's point of there being um, a continuum of ethics that they don't seem to get, where they think if they can cut it off just beyond what I did, then it's fine because it's like a cliff edge for them. As long as as long as I can set the moral <laughs> goalpost just after uh, what the thing I did or the thing that I'm admitting to doing, even though I might have done worse, uh, the thing that I've admitted to doing, um, then I can I'm fine because I can then technically semantically, you know, poke around and, and get away with it, which is ridiculous. Well, the thing about <clears throat> thing about that whole situation is like I, I made a video about um, what I had heard about going on like in a facebook group or whatever and the thing is actually like i still stand by i don't know 90 whatever percent of the content in that original video but what i said was distorted and twisted beyond all recognition that i was like these were not my original criticisms like my original criticism was um you know christy and somebody else were like oh look um encyclopedia dramatica has found bearings information from his music channel and his music channel was literally his name, you know, it was like my name music channel, you know, it wasn't linked to his bearing thing. So, but, the, but Encyclopedia Dramatica had revealed that information and they had like a photo and stuff. And then Christy or somebody else, whatever was in the Facebook group and was like, oh, look, this is on Encyclopedia Dramatica. And that was basically what happened. And then someone told me about it and I was like, I think that's dodgy. You shouldn't like in your when you're in a because Jeff said in this video, oh, when you're in a private server, you know, YouTubers talk, they talk all the time and they discuss things and they're like, look, this is someone's photo. They're like, oh, look, this is somebody's name. Did you know somebody worked here? You know, like, and that seems weird because that was the reason I was angry in the first place. I was like, okay, if that information's out there, like Christy wasn't the like doxer or whatever, all that was totally made up, but it's still like when you're in a private group, and you see a bunch of information about people, for me, I feel very uncomfortable. Uh, if people are like, oh, look, here's a photo that I found, you know, with a simple Google search, or like, here's a, I don't know, here's a phone number, or like, here's a whatever, there was no phone numbers in our situation. Okay, just making that clear. Like, and a, like, whatever, you know, you found some information, you're sharing it amongst each other in a private group. Personally, I feel very uncomfortable with that, which is why I made a video getting angry about it, and I think, Christy and other other people recognized that okay we probably we shouldn't even though Tim, it's not yeah, us it, it's you know Tim I keep correcting you on this and I think yeah, you just remember you probably disagree with some stuff I, to do with what I have to say yeah, so, I, yeah. <laughs> I know I was just saying like in that situation you asked where are these posts and I knew about them because I'd been reading like about the conversations and I tagged you in to the conversations and then you remembered it as me giving posting information but i've corrected you on this like in our discussion before uh, we well, came on air but i've also made it clear but that, I know that the time, i've yeah, made it clear that i wasn't like that. i wasn't actually there you know so i yeah. people were like oh tim said he was asleep he was pretending like he wasn't involved or he wasn't there that's a fact i was like in i was in bed when people were making these posts and i heard about it from like a second hand source so I wasn't even there. <laughs> like, you know, Jeff was right in this group, like sharing all the information about all these different people. I, I, and I, and I think, you know, 
their sharing of information was a lot more uh, malicious. Like it was like, look, we are digging up and looking at people's information. I don't think it was like that in our group. It was more like, oh, look, this is on Encyclopedia Dramatica, and then like, oh, uh, we shouldn't talk about this. You know, in private groups, I think even if it's private, that's that's not something I like. But but just to finish the story, so. I was like, oh, I don't like that, and I'm angry about it. Bering took that and distorted it into this insane conspiracy where Christie was like this doxing mastermind who was coordinating with this website, and she found all of the information, and she passed it on to the website and shit. And, and the people on the website were like, why would we need some random feminist YouTuber we've never heard of to help us find information? Like, this doesn't even make sense. But they loved it. They were like, this is fantastic. Like, there's just all this crazy drama and conspiracies. And and they were just reveling in Bering's, like, attack campaign on Christie, you know? And, um, and the other thing, too, if I can add in, they really... Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I'll stop. Really... <laughs> well, no, 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 it's okay. okay. Well, yeah, we'll talk about Sargon's role in this and how he handled the situation versus how you handled the situation, which I think is an important one to discuss because it says something about, like, how the call-out in the community. But, um, yeah, with the, with the bearing situation, one of the arguments that if you read through uh, in the entry, and there's only information in that entry that uh, Patrick, and he's got a channel called Patrick, but he had published um, himself online, like he put it up there, and they defend mm. themselves by saying, no, we didn't dox him, because that's his LinkedIn page, he put it up online, that's his music channel, he put it up online, that's his Twitter, the rest yep. report. There was nothing in there that they published, so if, you know, that is the author, uh, the main author of the page, <clears throat> Um, and the person is a well-known, you know, person is a, was an editor and might still be at ED. So, yeah, the, the idea that, you know, there's public information when it's bearing situation, that's a dox. Holiday actually, like, finds his business information, uh, sorry, finds, um, finds out for the camera thing his business, then uses that to find his name. And then we can talk about the time frame, but he got his name and then Kraut got it, got the information. Kraut gave the information to someone else who put it up on Kiwi Farms. Hmm. Jeff then went to Kiwi Farms and shared the link with a person in one DM and a group DM, according to what he said during some of the Hangouts. So that's like, again, as I said with Kevin, if they had caught me doing that, I wouldn't be on the internet today. But Jeff Holliday well, is doing it, and then he does a one hour I'm sorry video, and he's just going to try to blow it all over. I think there is, like, because we're talking about the spectrum of, like, ethics or whatever, I think there is a difference between saying, like, oh, look, this website has somebody's information on it. Look at that. And then people being like, oh, we sh I don't think we should share that. And the person being like, oh, okay, and then maybe deleting the message. And then, and the group of people don't generally talk about that kind of thing. And it's just a bit of a, it's kind of a bit of an uh, anomaly, like somebody wasn't necessarily thinking very much and they were like oh look th there's this stuff and people were like oh, hmm, we shouldn't talk about that probably and having an entire fucking server where you just find people's private info and you just gleefully like google stuff like, oh my god look this is this person's job this is this person's name like oh i found out some other stuff about them and they found out this stuff and i i think that is so much worse so i think by jeff holiday's standard like christy would be totally acquitted beyond any possible level of any, like, because Jeff seems to think that what, that groups just get together and talk about other people's private shit, and I don't think an ethical group does that. I don't well, think that uh, they do that, you know? Yeah. Well, I was just going to, it's a point I raised before, um, off air, but I'll raise it on it. The annoyance uh, I've, I've had with the constant talking point of, oh, they're using SJW tactics, or this person doesn't want to use SJW tactics. Considering they've all been at this now, they're all implicated. There's so many of them that have been back and forth using these supposed SJW tactics. These aren't SJW tactics. These are anti-SJW tactics. You're all in it thick as thieves. The I had the exact same thing on my mind. I love it how when they all start fighting, they're always like, you're being like an SJW. You're behaving just like an SJW. You're being it's, this as an SJW. And it's like, no, you're being like you. This is what you are like. Yeah, you're not being like an SJW. Devolved, you're just being you. It's devolved into its own sort of religious sect now, where the SJWs <laughs> are the sort of 
Satan character, where it doesn't matter what it is, all you have to do is compare it to Satan, and thou's to be damned. It's the boogeyman. Yeah. yeah, Sargon was like, Kraut is, is social justicing it up. And I was like, not really, because he used psychotic tactics against the social justice community before the whole alt-right thing. He was already psycho. Like, nothing's changed. Yeah, and I, you know? I like the fact that you now it's these fuckers that are getting doxxed. All of a sudden, it's a problem. And it's me, me getting doxxed, or Christy getting doxxed, or Danny Courts getting doxxed. That's that wasn't a problem when it was me well, getting at least. posted through my fucking front door, hand delivered, right? Not not in the post, hand delivered by some nutcase. Oh shit! I remember that. Oh my that's, god. Yeah, that's that's not that's not the end of the world. That can be fucking brushed under the carpet. But Jeff Holiday has to fucking disable comments on the oh so much for your free market of ideas then because you've had some fucking no. blowback because you're a prick. Well, Kevin, that's just using your own tactics against you. Can't you remember all those times that you hand-delivered messages to people saying, I know who you are? You've done it many times, Kevin. Everyone knows that. Well, well, yeah, my love notes to you are different, though. That's a different thing. Come on, then. What's that? I said, Uh, my my love notes to you are different. That's not not the same thing you're talking about. (laughs) I've got a real data dump on that. Yeah, okay. It's all going to come out. (laughs) Okay. Now I forgot what I was going to say. You bastards. You keep talking and then I'm trying to get a word in edgewise in my own goddamn show. Um, no, it's gone now. All right. Well, so, just, um, well okay, real quick. Um, I, I will just point out, you know, my perception of what happened with Christy or whatever is obviously different than Christy's perception. So there may be some kind of uh, dis- a little bit of a disconnect about what people thought happened. How we remember things. Yeah, exactly. So I just thought I'd put that out there. Yeah. Except, of course, uh, I've got screenshots, so... <laughs> You've got the you've got the receipts. I yeah, I've got the receipts. I know what happened. But um, I think in general we agree on what happened, which was just like which is what bearing this, lies. Yeah. That's what happened. Because I was fine with your critique. That wasn't the problem. The problem. Well, was, Christy, just just on a technical yeah, point, can you is there some way you can raise your volume because you're quite low? Oh yes, I can. I'm doing this thing where I'm trying to not be so hot with my sound being so loud, but I might be overcompensating now. Well, you're quite a, you're quite a whisperer anyway. You're very softly spoken. So. Uh, I always feel like I'm talking over everybody in the chat. But what I wanted to okay, well, now I forgot the question again. You guys stop it. Okay, we can just move on. That's all good. You were going to say I how, wanted to how do you get your hair so lustrous, Kev? It's glorious. I don't know. You're right. No. <laughs> well, yeah, it was more, more lustrous. Yeah, than, than what like what uh, Jeff's rocking these days is looking. But uh, on the issue of Jeff, I would say that in conclusion, I'm going to say uh, after a lot of evidence sifting and looking at it, that yeah, Jeff did dox Coach Red Pill not because the information was private. I don't think the information was private at all. Um, you know, looks. You know, the, the things that they're talking about are things that are found on um, in news articles and online. Something he wrote himself. I haven't seen evidence that his, his his home address was published sort of beyond what he published himself. But um, on that, what Jeff did in terms of like finding it, then sharing it, and then going to Kiwi Farms and sharing it again, and then denying... Or no, he said he knew it, but he lied about the second server to a lot of his friends. And that, to me, is a clear sign of malicious intent. Yeah. Did you watch and this then, video? And, not, and not, just, not just that, but... Yeah, I did. He shared it with this Seth character who he and i and everyone who's been following this knows is a serial doxer that's what he does that's his whole fucking his whole um shtick <laughs> yeah. and so you know it's going we, to get shared it's we like were joking it's like, it's like talking Before to the person air. you know is a gossip because you know it's going to get spread on because you don't want to tell the person that's exactly what he's doing there we were joking about why would anybody share any information with that Zeph guy because it'd be like Oh, hey, hey, Zeph, what's up? Like, oh, just figuring out my finances, you know, my PIN number is this and my bank account is blah, blah, blah. It'd be like, what, like a couple hours later, oh my God, my, my, everybody's taking money out of my bank account. How did this happen? <laughs> like, he, he seems so untrustworthy. Hello? Is Christy on? Oh. I was going to say, something. Myself get- oh, Christy. I was going to say something quickly, um, which was in Jeff Holiday's video, he appeared to say that he didn't have anything to do with the Kiwi Farms thing. Th- didn't he say that in his video? But he did tell Coach Red F- Coach that he took the link from Kiwi Farms and he posted it to a one person through a DM and then to a DM group. 
claiming that he said, hey guys, I just found this. What do you think I should do about it? Right. So I that think was he was just, setting. yeah, he was saying he didn't help create it. I think that's what he was saying. No, I don't know. And then, no, I've got the flow chart. He's not in my flow chart. Flow chart. No, do you want to see, the, the actual do you want to see my flow chart? <laughs> yeah, wasn't it? Was what that? was that, Kev? I was just said the, the Kiwi Farms was set up by, uh, the, the page on uh, CRP was set up by this guy, King of Pole, or whatever his name is. Oh, really? Right. Well, I think, yeah, it might be time to get out my uh, screenshot then. Of well, don't tease us like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so you guys um, should... So now, this is again... So, by the way, I mean, like I said, on the doxing thing, um, we talked about the concepts, but you guys also saw on the screen like the different ways of disseminating information and, and the ethics around that. And there are probably people who are ethicists who've done much better work, but I came up with... I wanted some kind of framework to talk about this <laughs> as a topic itself before dealing with the drama so we can at least make reference to different types of ways of disseminating information and different kinds of information. So this was my attempt to try to create some sort of a flow chart and um, sorry uh, what it's what I've got going on here is basically how things based on the accounts and the evidence I don't have like I haven't put everything on a timetable using screenshots like what happened on December 4th and what happened on December 11th but the best I can figure is that uh, so Kraut and Jeff obviously were sort of um, the main drivers yeah you got sorry to cut <coughs> Um, Kraut uh, was obviously looking to gather information on people. One thing we didn't talk about in our Hangout, Kevin, was all the different operations that were going on inside the server. We were focusing on the Coach Red Pill um, sort of efforts, I guess, but there were other ones that were going on. So Kraut was um, interested in getting that information. I, I know, basically, you know, we Jeff admitted that he found the information, and I don't know the time frame, but then Kraut got the name and from that he um, gathered some, it sounds like he gathered the information himself um, sorry my, my throat of course decides to go just as a uh, as I start to talk so you can, can you guys go for a second you just overcome with emotion I think it's all too much <laughs> on, on that flow chart the, the mention of Sargon there uh, I think it's worth bringing up the point um, when he says that uh, oh well I don't control crowd blah 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 all he, all he could have said was, well, look, I'll out you as a doxing piece of shit. Stop it. Yeah. And it would have stopped instantly. Look, if he'd had, imagine that Kraut is replaced by Christie there, and yeah. Sargon finds out that, C that Christie was up to what Kraut was up to. Do you think he would have hesitated to publish a video going, look at the dirty SJWs, it's disgusting? Well, this, this may sound weird, been... but yeah. I actually give Sargon a bit of a pass here because... I think he's too busy, like, over-reading feminism into Star Wars and, and gender, and he's too busy doing his PowerPoint presentation where he just calls everything to the fault of SJWs or whatever. Like, he, he's not really plugged into this whole thing. So I think maybe, like, Kraut sent him some crazy message, like, hey, there go, we found some information, and and... Sargon was like, I'm busy like making Star Wars all about gender. You know, I don't have time for this. So whatever. Well, I like I don't, I don't think he was paying attention, you know. Yeah, based on what I heard in the conversation that he and Kraut had that was leaked and it was on Zeph's channel, I'm gonna make a case why I don't think that he was innocent. Um and, and entirely innocent. And again, I'm gonna compare his actions with yours. So um so the dotted lines are like the initial docs. Well, not really again, the docs, the release. Right, so what I think happened was Jeff found the name, Kraut then got it, collected some information. That was then given to the Guardian, who was actually a double agent. <laughs> or at least he was working uh, two jobs. <laughs> who isn't a double agent? <sighs> yes, right. Especially when we talk about the phone call. Then from the Guardian in the initial time frame here, he gave that to, I think it's King of Paul. That's the name I remember. If I got it wrong, I'm an idiot and I'm sorry, but I think that's right. And then King of Paul created the Kiwi Farms entry. At which point, then Crowd asked Zeph and Liz to go do a background check into Coach Redpill, and that's when they found the info. And that's also the same link that Jeff found online and then spread in private DMs. Now, while all that was going on, the Guardian, as you can see in the third time point, was uh, he had gathered information on the server, 
he handed that information over to Braving Ruin, who then released the information. Um, and so this is my little flowchart of conspiracy and backstabbing. The other thing, too, about Sargon. Um, if you listen to the recording, it's really fascinating because first they're talking, uh, so focus, should we just talk about, I'll, I'll set up the recording, if you guys don't mind, because this is just insane, right? So, um, <coughs> Zeph's stream. What you'll find is a video where he's got the audio, um, where he's got some stuff censored out to not dox somebody's name, which I appreciate, and that's why I wouldn't play it, you know, sort of live on air because I don't know where those come in. But anyway, in that recording, it's Kraut. So he's secretly recording this conversation with Kraut, and there's other people. They're talking about having a call. Kraut is talking about having a call with Sargon. The other people, Sargon says he wants to be alone. So Kraut tells his friends, "Look, I'm going to have this call. I'm going to pretend that we're alone." But I'm going to feed all the sounds. So you guys can hear our conversation. Seriously, he says this. And then if you have advice for me, like whisper, like sort of, um, what was it? The the French. I'm sorry. Poet, it's just uh, also fucking funny. Like, <laughs> there is a lot of Schadenfreude going on for me. Like, yeah, it's like Cyrano, like Cyrano de Bergerac. How fucking, you know, it's a pit of snakes, man. All right. So uh, Kraut gets on this call and he, they work it so that you can pick it up. So here we're listening to Zeph listening to Kraut talk to a call which private which Carl thinks is private. And then someone else is they probably listening in. And, and then we're like, listening yeah. in. And then the oh, audience yeah. is listening to us. Exactly. The walls have ears. <laughs> clearly. And anyone anyone who trusts any of these characters after this is a fucking idiot. Jesus totally. Christ. The first part of their conversation is having a little um, discussion about Uzulu and some drama going on with him. And then uh, Sargon asks if he could record it. So first the question to, is, why would Carl want to record? That is, a car, I think, a really interesting question that someone should ask him. They go along and uh, start the conversation. Um, and Carl asks him about things he's been getting up to like looking up information on people. And they talk about one person um, who's got like a YouTube channel under two different names. And then Sargon raises Coach Red Pill because apparently I know Kraut had um, said that he sent Sargon a link when Coach Red Pill had appeared on Russian Today. And Carl says, in the call, I've told you repeatedly that about these culture warrior tactics. How many times is repeatedly, Carl? Um, how, how, when did you first hear about this? Um, how many times have you and Carl talked about it? I think these are interesting questions that Carl needs to perhaps answer to his audience because I think he lied to his audience in his first video, A Lie of Omission. Also, um, can I just Carl? mention, the, the yeah. fact that he appeared on Russia Today, I think gives you a fair idea of the kind of level of truth we're dealing with with Coach Red Bill, really. Well, I mean, I mean, um, can I say something? Huh? Yeah, yeah, Are go we ahead. Still Jim. Going. No, no, well, you know, people story. people often come to me and they're like, Christy and Michael Rollins and other people, you know, they flag videos and they report tweets and they do all this kind of shit or whatever. And I've said a couple of times, like, oh, I've heard about that kind of stuff, but I don't get involved. And they're like, that's not good enough. You are guilty. You're responsible for everything Michael and Christy does and all this kind of stuff. And so. In that sense, I'm a bit more forgiving of Zargon and, and because, you know, not, you know, taking a passing interest in something, I guess, but not really getting involved. Is that like a huge crime? Like you should, I should Except be policing what other people do and should Zargon be policing? Like, because he said, don't do that. Like, and I don't know how emotionally or mentally plugged into the whole situation he was, you know? Right. Well, what he goes on to talk about is why the alt right are not appropriate targets for his culture warring. Because oh yeah, that's fucking stupid. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> he was basically trying to, you know, talk Kraut out of um, the the you know going after the alt right in that way. Again, rationalizing it by yeah, saying so, they're not. A threat. Yeah, so that that speaks to a thread from our previous hangout, Christy, where uh, Saga was saying, oh, "I don't have sympathies for the alt right." Really? Why are you trying to stop someone from going after the old right thing? Okay, if you don't want to, that's one thing. But why would you stop someone else from doing so unless you had sympathies for the old right? 
and he hmm. kept going on about how he should they should talk to he should talk to him they should talk they should talk they should talk um and yeah it, it you know he was basically saying the alt right aren't really the problem here they're not a biggest threat and you know sort of just doing his sargon apologetics hmm. while at the same yeah, what, time claiming what we really need against is, the alt right what we really need is a 6 billion and one video <laughs> 6 billion and first video about fucking sjw's and feminists because there aren't enough of those just aren't we need we need more hmm. my questions for sargon would be when the video when he made his first video which we watched remember kevin i made you sit through it you'd watched it once where he says there's this crowd thing i don't really know what's going on but uh both sides are at fault um but but crowd is more at fault exactly this question well, but Why finding out just... of... finding out about something oh. but not Finding out about something, not fully finding out the extent of it, and not doing something about it, how much of a crime is that? I guess that's the question. I guess maybe it depends on how bad the thing is, you know? Because I think, you know, when people bring up to me, like, oh, Christy, Michael, flag, or report stuff, I know that you guys are doing that because you genuinely are like, this is harassment or bullying or whatever, and that's based on your kind of values or standards of how to use those tools. But it's not really the same as if I found out, oh, these these people I know are like collecting docs info and like trying to like research people's private lives and shit. I would be a lot more like, that sounds really bad. You know? Well, I don't so know. Let me give you this that. hypothetical. Let's, let me give you this hypothetical. What if it was a situation that there was someone you didn't really know, but they were a fan of yours? And they were sending you information about some, you know, appearances that are kind of like, um, really focused on this one person and they keep telling you about what they're doing and what they're what they're on about um, and then they you in private conversations and then there's a whole um, docs scandal the person that's been talking about and that you know has been collecting information on this person is called a doxer and they're denying mm. it right because at first Kraut denied that there was any doxing going on right and then yeah. you think you would make a video saying you don't really know what's going on or would you feel the obligation to say um, this person is denying any involvement but I've actually talked to them in private telling them not to do this in the past and they didn't listen to me and I wish I would have you know done more or whatever what would would your moral decision in that situation have been I, yeah, I think I would just publicly state, like, this person kept telling me about this, and they kept saying, don't do that, that's a dodgy thing to do, and I think it's the wrong thing to do, and and it's all come out, and it's a, it, it was a wrong action on that person's behalf, but would I have made some expose video before it all came out? I don't know. I honestly don't know about whether I would. I don't I Maybe in private, I would just keep saying, don't do that, it's the wrong thing, don't do it. And it oh, seems oh, like on... To the point on the stream the with on the stream with V and Wask and stuff, Sargon did say that. He said that I said don't do that, brother. So I don't know. He also said he didn't know anything about that. You know, and what he yeah, was that's referring not true. to was like, the collection. Yeah, exactly. Because he yeah, had yeah. talking. He lied several times. He's lied right. several times, and of course, the point I raised earlier. If it was one of us that had been up to is something half as bad as what they were up to, they, he'd have made a video straight away. He'd have made a video I think it, you know Calling out, oh God, it's just disgraceful, these communists, these evil communists, or whatever, you know. I think one thing we can establish just going forward is that the standards that they have for whether something is dodgy is contingent on the community doing it. So, I mean, like, if this was the social justice community, they would be going fucking nuclear constantly about it, but because it's, like, their community, they're like, it's different, you know, it's nuance, you know, it's like on... Didn't know this or didn't know the, the only reason I'm being nuanced about it is because, you know, contrary to how I'm painted, I do actually want to be try to be fair and be like, okay, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to just be like, because I hate Sargon f for other reasons that I'm just going to be like, he was some kind of mastermind in this scheme. I, I want to try to be fair, even though I know that that would not be extended to me. If if it was the other way around, I know that he'd be like, this is the SJWs, this is the evil doxing demons, you know, that's what he'd say about me. But I don't believe in his standard of, like, use their tactics against them or whatever, you know? That's his, like, ethical standard, which I reject. You know, my standard is 
be be a decent person, try to be fair. So I'm like, okay, he probably knew more than he put on. Is he as responsible as like Jeff Holiday? He was right there on the server doing all this shit. No, I wouldn't say so. You know, Jeff Jeff was um right involved. We, you know? I don't think we haven't yet. I don't think anyone is making that equivalence. My point was that hmm. you and Sargon were in very similar situations. Right, you you saw. We can disagree about you know like what is a dox, <laughs> like what it was, that, yeah. right? <laughs> but when you saw it and you disagreed, you stepped not only just like had the con had a conversation in the group, yeah, you know, right, to kind of do a call out. Whereas again, Sargon had many opportunities for that, and he passed them up. And that is you know he's he says he's not a leader, while at the same time selling tickets to events where he sits and people just listen mm. to him talk for hours. So not a leader yeah, but, who is, but, you know, charging money to have people listen to him chat. But after Bering's smear campaign and all of the false information and headaches that I got from daring to, like, speak my opinion about something that I saw happening um, that I didn't have to talk about, would I make that video again? I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't. I'd probably just try to solve it in private now. Because I'm like, I can't be fucked with the fucking headaches. I can't be bothered with the attack videos. I can't be bothered with, like, 10 million anti-feminists being like, what did they know? When did they know it? Like, you know, snooping around. I'd prefer to just solve it in private because, you know, Bering's fucking smear campaign just totally jaded me to being able to talk about stuff and then have people be fair to what I'm saying, you know? So well, that's, that, would I do yeah, that now? Probably not. No. That, that's actually a good point, actually. The, the tiny threads of nothingness that Bering tried to spin into this big web of conspiracy if he was to do the same here i, I mean we wouldn't even have, wouldn't have <laughs> oh to god do. there actually is a web of conspiracy bullshit going on here. melt down like he would turn into goo yeah. <laughs> yeah. but what's what's his response been so far did he has he made a video on this i don't even know radio oh. silence and it's probably going to be like just like jeff's actually a nice guy leave jeff alone Chips, you could better your mind. That's probably what this video is going to be. Well, talking about <laughs> accents, we haven't yet had anything from the chat, and I thought it was interesting that someone pulled you up for your pronunciation of nuclear as nuke yeller, which is nuke yeller. Yeah, nuke yeller is a, a big danger in this world. Yeah, exactly. And, and I do love the Kiwi accent because they pronounce stuff weird. <laughs> it's brilliant. But yeah, on the bearing front, I mean, because I have been keeping an eye on Twitter to see if he's responded uh, to this, <laughs> and um, and he's not posted for four days in his tweets and replies. So either he knew more, like Jeff told him the truth earlier, maybe, and he's just kept his head down, or maybe he's suspended again. I don't know. He might be but suspended. Look, if, had this been had this been SJWs? Had, let's let's put the boot on the other foot. He'd have made at least what six or seven videos by now about this, uh, calling you everyone. Could, yeah. Oh, this! Oh, Christy Winters is the most evil, manipulative human being in the world. Whereas because it's Sargon and Jeff and all these bloody buds, it's oh, never mind. That's fine. Yeah, it's he like this is a lot video. different. Jeff is a good friend of mine, and Christy is someone I didn't like. So even though what Jeff did was way worse, come on, give him a break. He's a good guy. You make him sound like a, fucking, <laughs> make him sound like a, um, uh, a kind of um, a stage production of the Oliver Twist character or something. Yeah, that's I'm just like, what I hear yeah. when he makes videos. That's all I hear. It's just like, oh, you did a video. You did a video. And I'm like, oh, it's a bearing video. He and Jeff were on a <laughs> hangout when Jeff was still trying to very poorly do damage control by talking him away, himself deeper into a hole. <laughs> but during that, I so after Jeff, it came out that Jeff had lied. I went back and watched, uh, watched it, listened to it really um, again because I was listening through it with very different ears this time. And Bering is on there, and it's interesting because when the issue of doxing comes up, he's really quiet, and he talks about flagging and stuff. conversation over to flagging, and then Jeff comes on, and he doesn't give him a full throated defense um, in that hangout, and so uh, because. If you guys want me to bring it up, I mean, when Baring told me that he had um, my docs, he claimed as justification that uh, you know I had, which I had not, uh, collected his personal information, which, again, the ED article that he keeps blaming me for was stuff that he had posted himself and didn't need a conspiracy to find. Um, and he wasn't Which wasn't collected by you. Oh, I don't know if I have it now. Damn it. You didn't collect it. They but collected it, like these bunch of online yeah, trolls. Exactly. It wasn't you. 
even me, he knows it was Cobalt Cat because he named Cobalt Cat in the first video he did about it. You yeah. know, so it's not like it was a mystery. Yeah, and, and in that, he basically says, you know, just because your information is out there in public, that doesn't make it right for you to collect it and publish it somewhere else. To say those words to Jeff Holliday. I want the video. <laughs> Unless you're my friend. Yes. Then it's okay. Then it's okay. <laughs> And it's a shame because um, when he had the excuse of trying to pretend it was Christy who doxed him, he was making out like doxing was a really big deal. But now it's his friends doing it. It's, oh, never mind. You know, just, I'm just going to ignore that because it's clearly not that big of an issue, is it, Barry? You, you know what? Um, you know, Zeph sent an email to, was it Coach Red Pill or somebody else, where he said something like, oh, there might be legal action against you for some reason. By the way, here's your address or whatever. And everyone flipped the fuck out. And to be honest, I think, like, you know, sending someone's address to somebody is worse than Bering's email to Danny, which had his school and, like, whatever, like, I don't know what he was studying or something. But it's still, like, functionally the exact same thing. It's like, look, I've got some personal information. I'm going to email you with your personal information because it's an intimidation tactic. And well, nobody gave a fuck Bering did that. But when it's Zeph, they're like, oh, my God. Well, this, this is the thing. That's illegal. What what Bering did to both Christie and and um, and Danny, and indeed what what these fuckers have done in several cases, including to Coach Redbill, that's illegal. That's clearly right. you're trying to menace that person. You're trying to menace them into silence by threatening them with, with their docs. Yes, that's and really it's kind of, and to me, it doesn't matter whether it's a docs or not in that situation. It matters whether it's like I have some information that emailing to you would be inappropriate because it would obviously be a threatening thing to email to somebody. Like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, I know what school you go to. Like, oh, okay. It's not like we're friends. It's not like we get along. Why the fuck are you telling me yeah. you know this? And there are, you know? there are ways it means. If someone sends, like, a couple of times, some, some random fucking prick on the internet has um, sent me private information of someone, and what I immediately do is go to that person and say, this other person, so I name the person, I give the fucking full trail of where this has come from. This person has your docs. They're trying to spread it around. You can do with that as you wish. I'm not going to give it to anyone else. That's not me. That's not me threatening anybody. That's me saying, literally, um, I'm trying to help you out here, which is the card right. that Bering tried to pull with, um, with Christy, but clearly that's not the case because he didn't give the information in terms of where that came from. He made excuses, but he didn't actually do it. That's him trying to cover his ass. And he gave That's it him right. lying, months later. He gave it to me when we were having an argument. Whereas Michael Rollins, when he got information on Bering, he sent it to him right away. And Bering said, Yeah, and Bering was like, Thanks, mate. I really appreciate that. I'm going to give you so much credit for it. And he never did, of course. Exactly. Our conversation <laughs> was angry with me. He mentioned, you know, this thing I was giving your docs months ago. And it was April, which means he probably had them very shortly after I was doxxed in December of last year. And it's just so delicious, by the way. I'm so full on schadenfreude from, from, from this time last year and the hell that I was going through and trying to defend myself and prove my innocence. And now to have Jeff come out and admit he's a liar, oh, it's just so sweet. Well, it's so sweet. i got to say, you know, after like Kraut's demented video about the SJWs or whatever, I gotta say the community I am a part of is fucking squeaky clean compared to these people. I gotta be perfectly honest. Like we don't do this kind of shit. Like no matter how hysterical they go, because you know someone from this group called them a racist or said the misogynist or transphobic or or said something that they didn't like that was mean. Like I've not seen activity like this at all. You had a front row seat group. to the whole. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you had a front row seat to the back stage uh things of you know like mythcon and talking about all that and there's nothing like this going on with right MythCon. Well, no, well, no, but you remember that time that i was being friends with tim yeah. but also secretly recording michael who was recording <laughs> christy who was recording christiosity <laughs> who was recording the ranting feminist who was secretly a double agent for tim and michael remember that's that? true i remember that time yeah, that, that was, that, that, that that was a dark time in my life kevin these are why do you do that to me yeah, these are grown adults, and yet they're behaving like YouTube is some sort of... I mean, the, the, the example I give, it's like a John le Carre novel, where you've got agents and double agents and double crosses and turns and heels and all sorts. And you think, well, this 
it's, it's YouTube and you're grown people. What the fuck are you doing? I also think I think one distinction to make is between like what people do publicly and what they do in a clandestine, secretive manner. Because people often say like, oh, you know, Steve Shires has said, we'll send a message to this conference and say, this speaker is transphobic and they're racist and you shouldn't have them on. And then they'll go insane at Steve for doing that. But he's doing it in public. He's being like, these, my values and my public belief about this person is that they're a racist or whatever. So I'm going to send this email and it's, it's all on, it's all out in the open. It's not like a secret you know, scheme or plan that he's doing. It's just like, okay, you disagree. Yeah, you disagree with Steve's values. You disagree with the fact that he thinks it's it's okay to say, I think the speaker's horrible and you shouldn't have them at their conference. You that, But it's an open disagreement. It's not clandestine. It's not like a secret conspiracy. Whereas these guys are all acting like in the dark, sharing private shit and, and having, you know, Double crossing each other constantly and backstabbing each other and I mean, recording are, each other. Are there, are there any? Are there anyone involved in this that hasn't got a knife in their back that hasn't also put a knife in someone else's back at some point during this whole thing? Everyone's mm. thrown someone under the bus and being thrown under the bus. Well, that's what not you know the scumminess of it. The, the, it's, the it's, self-serving nature of all of these people. And look, as we said, it's Schadenfreude. I, um, I'm sorry. Any one of them that feels sad about any of this. I'm I'm bathing in your tears. I fucking love right. it. Yeah, because I mean, like, that's not Steve doing something um, clandestine. That's him doing something you disagree with, and then people will make a million videos saying I disagree with <laughs> you doing this thing. You know, Where's and that's the normal was... course of things. Right, but these guys washed it through Kiwi Farms. They didn't want to be directly. I mean, if they would have put their names to it, and Jeff would have stood up and said, you know what? article and said this in the past um, and I'm going to associate my name with it because he put his name to it I, that's, I don't think that's a doc so let's have that conversation but instead it was this whole attempt to sort of like filter the information through and get it out secretly in order to be able to attack him but not own the fact that they went looking for it um, Chris Yossity in the chat said I, she wishes she we could establish what a dox is whatever I guess we talked about that briefly but that's just. Tim Do I? Be put into a box. <laughs> Tim, um, people put Tim in a, in a doxing box. He's like, a no, it, it can't be conceptualized. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it can be conceptualized, but you're it's the, a matter of like, like. You're like the judge, Judy, doxing. Am I? Yeah. But I think it's a matter of like the the literal technical semantic argument versus the ethical moral argument to do with doxing and i think they're kind of two different conversations i think in the first case um a dox you know it could either be publishing personal private or identifying information in a malicious way in a context where it wouldn't normally be or taking it into a different context um, or it could, so maybe it is difficult because there could be multiple meanings, or it could just be releasing private information that wasn't out before. And, but it's also contingent on like, is the person being doxxed? How do they feel about it? Are they okay with it? Because if they don't give a fuck, like the, the original dox will just turn into usual information. Like, oh, you know, I was trying to keep my name secret. It came out. Now that it is out, I accept that. That's fine. Just call me my name. You know, so the docs has kind of transitioned into being ethically, morally okay. Like the original action wasn't okay because they didn't like it, but over time the person's like, okay, it's fine, whatever, just call me that name. So now the information is not really a docs anymore; it's just their name on the internet. You know, so I think it, it's it is kind of a bit of a spectrum of of morality and ethics, and and people have very semantic arguments about it. Like it's either a very technical thing. Or it's a little bit more to do with intent and maliciousness and context, you know? So, and also, a, th a third, another wrinkle is that there is a legal definition or a legal concept of doxing, you know? So this, yeah, I know, it's a fucking clusterfuck. <laughs> Would you I'm say looking that, up doxing, um, legal definition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this, and I'm gonna, I think I know the answer, but just because it's legal or illegal, you wouldn't say that that makes it ethical or unethical. 
Nah, that's but that's well, the two different conversations, you know, between between well, semantics and technicality and, and ethics. This is the bullshit of it, right? Bering used virtually no evidence whatsoever and conjecture and his own fucking fantasies in his head to convict Christy of something she didn't do. And now it's one of his friends. All of a sudden their community are expecting us to be like, well, in a courtroom they wouldn't be convicted of this. As if that's <laughs> as if you choose a courtroom. It's ridiculous. But to build on that distinction, would you say, Tim, that there are lesser and worse doxings of people where there's, a, let's say, a, a venial doxing and a mortal doxing, to borrow from Catholic theology? Well, where is that? Venal? Uh, for instance, like when No Bullshit claimed that he was doxed. Right. And people went and they found out that actually he had a YouTube channel with his name on it, and they published that. And he said, you that see, I would, I and would class that like as, I would call that like spreading a dox around. But I've had this argument on Twitter like a bajillion times with people where they're like, it's not even a dox or whatever. So if, if it's just because we're hung up on the word dox, we could just say it was taken from that context and spread around in a way that is malicious and shitty, even if you don't like no bullshit. It's like he didn't want his name and info being used in that context. You could have found it on his YouTube channel and that's perfectly fine. But then but is there retroactive doxing? I mean, can you, you know, like for instance, Coach Red Pill had a whole life beforehand. Then he came on hmm. YouTube and expected everyone to sort of not look into that or associate him with that, even though, like I said, sometimes he put his Coach Red Pill Reddit account, you know, he posted things and then linked that account to his YouTube. So can you use that kind of information to call him out if I wanted to, you know, or someone else wanted to cite that and bring in something not from YouTube, but something he's clearly, he's put out there or stuff what? from his previous mm. life because he advertises, he connects his business. I think, well, it kind of depends how connected it is, you know. If it's right there, then it's, so it's maybe are, a little... So you, so, you are, so you are the Judge Judy of doxing on YouTube because you have to hear the case in order to make a decision. There's no precedence here. <laughs> well, <laughs> as I said, whenever I get in a conversation with people on Twitter, um, the person is either hyper-technical, and that's normally when they're trying to defend somebody, or they're really loose about it, and that's when they're trying to go like a little bit... No, yeah, yeah. When they're hyper loose about it, it's because they are trying to say that that person is evil, you know? So it's kind of like, it's sort of in the eye of the beholder. It sort of depends, like, how much do you want to defend this individual? If you, if you don't want to defend them, like, it's, it's definitely doxing. And if you do want to defend them, like, hey, it's a little nuance, like, chill out, like, relax, you know, like, there's a lot of different meanings to the word dox. Right, <laughs> you know? you, then. Can you have, do you have in your experience of the many times that you've had to deal with doxing, a, a single principle that has guided you or connected one or two of the cases of doxing? That's just sort of the thing that you found to be true um, across cases. For me, it is definitely about taking information from a kind of benign context and reappropriating it, reappropriating it and putting it in a new context where it's being used in a malicious or negative fashion. And for me, that is kind of like the guiding star. It's kind of like if somebody's address is on a web page, docs or not, if you, like V just did, if you screenshot that and tweet it out to all your followers and say, oh, look, Coach Red Pill, Pill's address is on his about page, that's putting that information in a new context, which is clearly malicious, so all of his fans, all of his Twitter followers can look at that guy's address, to what effect, I don't know. It's basically just like an intimidation tactic. But then people can say it's already public, so it's not the docs, and, you know, fight about it and shit. But for me, it's ethically wrong because it's reappropriating it into a malicious context, you know? And I think that, for me, that's kind of what it's about. Like, when AIU was saying, I will find your name, it's not like there's anything wrong with somebody having a name. Everybody has a name. But when you put it in a new context where you're saying, I know your name is this, now stop criticizing my YouTube channel. It's a little bit irrelevant whether it's a dox or not. I know that he did partake in actual legitimate, like, finding and releasing private information. So he did doxing, you know, like, just in the, in the technical sense. But whether or not it's doxing, that is 
you know, reappropriating some information in, in an intimidating way. And for me, that is what decides whether it's ethical or moral, you know? It's immoral. It's yeah, so unethical. Who are you referring, yeah. Referring to in that case, V? Oh, right. Yeah. V is a god on this crusade against Coach Redpill. And he found um, Coach Redpill's address. Sargon's little his... fucking gimp. Of course, he's going to go against fucking Coach Redpill. That's Sargon's right. his little fucking master. Well, he found his address on Coach Redpill's about page on his Patreon, screen capped it, and then said, like, oh, look, Coach Redpill's a huge artard because here is his address on his Patreon page. And then I said, wow, look at V spreading around a dox. And then it resulted in an entire day of fighting with people about what dox means. And I was like, oh, God, this is hell. Well, I put but, on my screen now, if you can look at my screen, because I'm talking, if Tim will be quiet, because he was talking, uh, I think he's, no, I just know your screen would be the last one up. Then uh, this, I caught this um, online and I was disgusted by it. So I took a picture of it to prove what a shit V is. And going along with what Tim was saying, this was a case where, um, I don't have the date on it, but it was in the last few days when he was, um, it was before the video came out, because he makes reference to it where he actually sent out to his, I looked it up to be precise, 14,900 plus thousand followers, the link to the Kiwi Farms um, entry. So yeah, V is being a shit. Right, Kevin, so I mean, is, last one. is the key point that it's a docs or not, or is the key point that it's sort of like intimidation tactics, sleaziness, underhandedness, scumminess, shittiness because i think like if you were at all concerned about if coach red pill is like i've been doxxed i'm being doxxed and then you found his like patron page with his address i would be liable to like privately message coach red pill and be like hey by the way do you know your address is on your patron page i, I wouldn't screen cap it and be like look here's his address like that's scummy right which is exactly what michael did when he was given information he turned it over to bearing in a private message saying hey dude I'm going to delete this. This sucks. You should know it's happening. Right. right. And then if Coach Redpill is like, ignores that, doesn't care, doesn't give a fuck, sure, you could say Coach Redpill did keep saying he's being doxxed, but he, I've told him his address is there and he didn't care. So he's just grandstanding. And the other thing, too, is if, you know, the alt right is not a big threat and Sargon knew and talked to Kraut and Kraut didn't seem to be backing off, why didn't he tell Coach Redpill? Yeah. Sorry, how do you mean? Why didn't he tell Coach Redpill what was going on? Who, Sargon? Yeah. Because, yeah, because it is just, it's a hype of snakes. I think it's just, you know, it's <laughs> hell well, on yeah, earth. It's sort of a rhetorical <laughs> question, but... <laughs> and it just sort of, I yeah, think, that's, you know, all along... That's what, they, that's what they call in sport the hospital pass. You just threw him the ball knowing there was nowhere to go, and he got smashed. Well done. And, you know, we've got, so, evidence. I mean, we've got evidence of our community, people, when they are sent information, handing it over to Bering, um, when they're uncomfortable about the level of information being talked about, calling each other out. Interested. Otherwise, it could have maybe been a really useful conversation to have. Um, and, yeah, just the fact that we don't do this kind of stuff and we don't record each other to make sure that we have copies of our conversations for the future. Again, you know, the, Sargon was sitting on that tape. Who was that tape for? I still really want to know an answer to that. That's just funny because we, we had, like, you know, I don't know, a two-year shitstorm drama from a small snafu. Whereas with this sort of community, it's kind of like the norm to kind of do shady shit and then backstab each other. And I, I was also thinking like, you know, this is kind of like part of Kraut's personality that he always wants to like try to ruin or destroy people who get in his way. So even if I agree that the alt-right's horrible and, you know, I've got issues with race realism and their racist beliefs and so forth, um, when Kraut gets involved in this kind of thing, he does start thinking like, we have to expose the person um, for their past, for things they've done in the past, and like, oh my God, look, we've found some information that we could use against them personally and so forth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Sorry, you did, that, that was the point I, I meant to bring up. It, it drove me fucking mad. During the stream that V and Sargon were on on, on the Worski channel, they were going about, well, this, uh, um, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't be going after people's pasts and exposing the past and all the rest of it. And I thought, you two gamergators 
are going on about not exposing other people's past. You did nothing but tear apart Anita Sarkeesian and, and Zoe Quinn for stuff they hadn't even really done. Like, she had some loose association with a guy who was done for telemarketing fraud. As if that implicates her in that telemarketing <laughs> fraud, which it is. You think, you cheeky bastard, you did nothing but tear him apart for stuff in the past. So fuck All right. And Why can't you just guys, make it... Oh, sorry. In chat. Did, is she still there? Does she want to be invited into the call? Yeah, trolled by tiny people. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, Tim. Go on with your point. I was just going to say, why can't you make a video about how the guy is called Red Coach Bill and how he his videos are fit highly awkward and embarrassing and overly dramatic and hasn't like you know about this guy, right, Kevin? Like, hasn't he? I do. Yeah, I mean, I've, I done, of... I've got a sense of manosphere around him. I've watched virtually every video he's ever made. He's yeah, he's a mental case, but um. I want to know. I mean, from the video, from, so go on. I was just going to like look at his videos. What kind of shit has he talked about? Like, is it just about how the worms are destroying well, society? There's, and... there's there's a kind of is a kind of MRA, kind of MIGTOW, kind of PUA, which sounds like a really weird mix of things to be. But he kind of crosses a lot of the bases, and he does pointless drama, and not just pointless drama in the sense that he gets caught up in it. He starts it. He constantly like pokes and prods every single person, even people on his own "quote unquote" side or whatever. He's, I'm he's... trying to look at uh, what his videos are. "Don't fuck crazy" is one of his videos. Well, that sounds very <laughs> empathetic and kind. The yeah. three things you need to get and hold a woman. I guess like a slave or something. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he's, he's a dick. He's a dick. I would advise you, Tim, and you really ought to have watched it anyway. Supporting, you know. A friend's uh, YouTube channel. You should watch my Descent of Manosphere video available on my channel, everybody. It's a good idea. Yeah, you put that I was just saying, why can't you make a video there. about? Why can't you make a video about how he's just a total chuckle fuck? Like, why can't? Why do you have to look into his like personal private life? Like with with Cult of Dusty, they were like, Cult of Dusty used to run a porn scam. Therefore, and I'm like, therefore what? I mean, maybe. Okay, maybe it shows you like you shouldn't trust. Dusty that much, but who the fuck can you trust on YouTube and what's got to do with his like YouTube content? Like, not also, not it's a whole lot, it you know? they say, Oh, uh, you can't have oh, anyone accused of wrong think in the in the hive mind. Look at anyone who has dissented from the line. Uh, David Sherat, the formerly Spinosaurus King, uh, Cult of Dusty, Thunderfoot, anyone who disagrees with Sargon and that ilk get castigated as, and that's this is why I bring up the um. Uh, the comparison to it being a religion is that they get essentially excommunicated from the church of anti s Jews. It's they, yeah, they do dig into their lives as well because V did heaps of digging into David's girlfriend and no one cared about that. And the thing is, V is very open about these things. He's basically like, I don't give a fuck, I will look into your private life, I will look up your private information. And he said, to Jeff Holiday as advice, like you should have just said, "Yeah, I did it," and I don't give a shit because it's because I'm a scumbag like V. <laughs> you know, that's what he should have said. Should we talk about uh, the Don Quixote of of uh, Red Pill communities, <laughs> Coach Red Pill, because he really made a lot of tactical errors in my political assessments from this whole pot potentially. You know, he, he's no little finger, is what I'm saying. Uh, His videos are so cheesy. Oh my god! But uh, they are. But I want to know how he got that panning shot. Do you know when he was playing the audio? In that, he's playing in the audio video? and he's thinking deeply. He's like, yeah, and he's but hmm. uh, yeah, he's cheesy as fuck, right? It's terrible. But the actual <laughs> shot is kind of beautiful. It's from his like ceiling, but it sort of pans out. And you think if there was something interesting going on in that shot, that would be amazing because it's a really great visual. But it's just him well, he, sat there, kind he, of stroking. He takes a he takes a sip oh, of coffee. Wow. It was quite dramatic. Yeah. It's, like, it's probably just uh, it's, it's probably just it's probably just post production, Kevin. He probably just had a still and then zoomed in or in, out on it. Yeah, but I, I mean, just, how did I, he do fucking ceiling? Just look like, celebrate. The video literally made me laugh. Like when he's like listening, he's like real deep. He's like Sargon knew. I'm just like, all right, look. I mean, I know it kind of sucks, but. It's not the end of the fucking world. Like somebody on Twitter was like, "You'd think he'd found another JFK shooter or something." <laughs> you know? like, like, all right, relax. Sargon's sh a shitty person. Like, it's not like fucking I don't know Schindler's List or something. Calm down. 
called him a cuckolded little bitch, which I thought was quite funny. And I put together a little little forty second uh, clip of so, uh, in the video responses to each other, they both called the other one a cuck. So I thought I'd just he's play t- it. he's blue pilled. He's a blue pilled man. He needs some of he needs some of my red pills. He's been t- taking too many Mike Cernovich blue pills. Have you, Kevin, heard of a gorilla pod? Heard of what, sorry? Have you heard of a gorilla pod? Gorilla pod? Yeah, they're awesome. It's not like, it's like a tripod, but instead of being with like metal sticks, there are connected sort of balls. Uh, oh, yeah, the ones that it looks like a kind of uh, a tripod of anal beads. The one that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen those. Precisely. Oh, amazing. Right, so you just take your mobile phone, you get your gorilla pod, you put it up on your light, you point your oh, phone okay. at it and look at it, and then you just point it down from the ceiling. Well, I might do that, and then, but the thing is, because I'm such a fucking dickhead, I'm not going to put anything interesting, it's just going to be me doing a silly face and do that visual, because I think the visual is really interesting. <laughs> and I, I, I love the fact that we can take this technology and fucking waste it. Brilliant. Anyway. Anyway, right, so uh, can I get on with my tactical assessment? No, so, Tim, stop talking. Well, well, no, uh, no, well that's, this is just this is just a this is just an update. Chrissy said she can't join. She has, go she has to go. Oh, okay. That's yeah, it. I did see that actually. All right. But yeah, thanks for the update. In case we think we and people think we forgot about her. Uh, hmm. I did. I mean, I'm looking a little bit at the chat as we're doing this. But um, yeah, so a uh, coach red pill. Sargon for Sargon. <laughs> that sounds like a song, or maybe a band name. Uh, Coach, <laughs> he was a hate boner. He just really was focused on taking taking Sargon down, and I don't know why. Because he actually could have made a much better case by targeting Jeff Holiday, because he actually he had evidence on Jeff Holiday and could make sort of, uh, especially with the confessions, a, a clear link of of doxing and harassment that you know was was documented pretty well on on twitter in the show kevin and i showed you a tweet and we had blurred something out of it because it was something that was too explosive to just put on air having not done the background research i can give you an update now because i feel it's entirely appropriate and not at all a dox to let you know that uh, what was talked about was a uh, well it's an article a reference is an article written by coach red pill it was posted on Reddit under the authorship. The byline was Coach Red Pill. The hyperlink for that author uh, went to the page, which was uh, the Reddit owner's page. And if you clicked on that one, it took you to the Coach Red Pill YouTube channel. So he connected the Reddit to his YouTube. Uh, so I know that this was written by him. And in, in it, he talks about uh, a t- uh, when he was an undergraduate and he was accused of rape and he said he was falsely accused of rape and went through the story and why he ended up, um, well, at the end of the story, he had a one-year suspension and it sounds like from reading the rest of the article, he, instead of going back to school, started off on a different career. But it was very interesting because he went after Sargon and he missed. Um, he didn't do, he hasn't turned a lot of people, I mean, there are some people who don't like Sargon, but by and large, I don't think that the vast majority of Carl's fan base is turned against him. They tend to accept his explanations, hmm. changing explanations sometimes without too much question. But it was interesting because as I read through the article, he gives advice on how to be tactical when facing these kinds of situations. And it was funny. I thought I would share it if you guys don't mind another screen share from me. In this article, he gives four pieces of advice and he talks about his first mistake was overconfidence, um, which is interesting because, again, he really came at this whole argument from a position of real moral superiority. And he also, I think, knew about uh, Carl's invo- uh, uh, knowledge, even though he denied it. He said, I think Carl's involved and I didn't have any evidence. And he really played this out like his intuition and he saw this coming. I actually think he had the information for um, longer than he um, sort of presented to his audience because he felt he was so right and because he felt he had evidence that would make the case for him, he was overconfident when he tried to go after Carl. The second one was not understanding the politics of the situation. Um, here, in my opinion, we have a case that you know Carl has a huge fan base and it would take quite a lot to turn them against him. A mere allegation, even when um, you have some evidence presented, is not going to be sufficient to convince people who like 
Carl, it's not just about appealing to their rationality. You also have to appeal to their, because it's when you feel betrayed that you think, oh, wrong window. Dang it. This was the one I wanted. Uh, so the third mistake was not frightening the school's administration into being fair. Here I would say is, um, I'm going to turn it on its head. Coach Redpill doesn't have a lot of friends. He doesn't network. He doesn't have an army of people who will stand up for him. And I think that is part of the problem. Like he was out on a limb on his own. He didn't have people having his back and he doesn't have a lot of least, people making videos. But that's at yeah. least in part because as we've seen with these guys, they're not friends. They're temporary alliances that they form with one. Oh God, get me off the screen. Good Lord. Um, they, they, these are temporary alliances that they're happy to break at a moment's notice and just stab each other in the back. They're all slimy little fuckers. So he doesn't have friends because presumably he stabs people in the back so often. You know. Which makes his fourth point kind of ironic, which is not lining up allies his hearing. And it seems to me he kind of knew this JF guy, but it's not like, again, he didn't have a bunch of people who were willing to go to bat for him or take the case and kind of help make the argument for him. And it's just so hilarious that he didn't follow his own advice. <laughs> so I just thought that little gem of irony was, was worth sharing because, again, I think he would have been much better off had he just focused on Jeff where he had actual evidence that, you know, mm. Jeff, in this case, um, had had done an, enough things where people would have sided with him more on the Jeff thing as a consequence of all of this because he swung at Sargon and missed. People now who hate him and hadn't heard of him before. Well, I think that Sargon, over the course of his, I, I'm not sure how long he's been doing it, but like probably for a very long time, has primed his audience to believe that any criticism of him is disingenuous or dishonest. And I experienced that when he made a video to me, and it was constantly just like, you're a liar, Tim. You're a fucking liar. You're a liar. You're an autist. You're a, this is autistic screeching. Like, you don't care. You don't believe what you're saying. You're just saying this because you're a liar. You're a fucking liar. And then when he did the video to Dave Sherratt, he was like, you're a snake. You're a liar. You're a liar. Everything about you is lies. You're a liar. When he said Heather Heyer was died of a heart attack, and it's a right-wing conspiracy, this guy on right-wing watch i can never say that properly right wing watch wrote a article about it where he said like this is a right wing conspiracy it's bullshit the, the corona person was like she died of blunt force trauma um you know saigon so googled that and was like okay i was wrong then but i'm willing to admit, admit my mistakes i'm like you you're a liar you're a liar you're dishonest you're a liar and it's like it's it's like I don't know if it's a tactic or it's just like he's priming his audience to it always is. think that it, the alt right all over. It's Donald Trump all over. It's that uh, never. Well, you can admit to being wrong when you're absolutely, when you absolutely have to. But anything you can just pass off as fake news, just uh, just shout fake news at it. Right. And it, if it, I if I made a video about the Heather Hyde thing and I said Sargon is wrong, you know, it, she died of blunt force trauma. Here's the evidence, and you know. Sargon didn't check it out and he bought a right-wing conspiracy. I bet you if Sargon made a video back to me, he'd be like, Tim's a liar. He's a dishonest. He's disingenuous. I'd be like, how am I a liar? I'm just stating that you got this wrong. You know, and I think it's, it's he continually um, kind of massages his audience into believing anything that is against Sargon is a lie and disingenuous. Like, there is no honest critic of this man. You know, it's not possible. And I think Coach Redpill has experienced that firsthand, you know? He's like, oh, I'll go against Sargon. No, you won't, because his entire audience thinks any criticism of him is from a place of dishonesty and lies. So well, no, you're not, yeah. you're not gonna do very that well. Was, yeah. <laughs> no matter what evidence you raise against Trump, no matter what you bring up from his past, and all the shitty things he's said and done, all these fan base just go, oh, that's just the lying press. It's the fake news. Doesn't matter. Right. Doesn't matter if true, they're not interested in what is true. They want they want to support their guy. Well, when Coach Redpill says Sargon knew, that's a fact. Yeah, he did. And they're like, dishonest liar! How dare you say anything about Master Senpai Sargon? Anybody who says anything about him is a liar. I hate you. Downvote. Comment. You are an, an f bomb artard. You know. <laughs> that's how it works.
Bye to Adam, by the way. Hopefully he'll listen back and hear that. Hmm. So yeah, that was my little red coat. Um, sorry, um, Coach Red Pill. Hail of woe. Of a, a failed attempt at uh, killing Caesar. And now we'll see going the fallout from that. So yeah, this shit show is just really blown up on a lot of people. And I also want to tip my cap to Andy Worski. I have to say, like, there's a lot of things I disagree with Andy on, but I have to tip my cap to his endurance. The man has probably done, what, 12, wait, wait, wait. No, Chris, even more, 15, 20 hours there's, there's, of live streams? You want, to, you want to tip your cap to his endurance? Is there a story you're not telling us? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, God. Andy, so not my type. <laughs> He, I mean, the fuck, at this point, confirmed, at this, confirmed I mean, I'm not saying other people that. wouldn't be into him. I'm just saying I'm not, I wouldn't, I would never be that into him. At this point, Andy streams more than Baked Alaska, and Baked Alaska did a nine hour stream. <laughs> With Kevin <Seven> Walsh. <laughs> I'd be oh, happy God. to tell you. <laughs> I, I, I wasted that amount of time in my life. Including watching him just be silent, which were your favorite bits. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so. Kevin, I mean, I'm going to do a stream on Andy Wilski. I'll probably repeat a lot of what I've said in this stream on that stream as well, because it's kind of stuff on my mind. But another point that I was thinking of is, you know, us as members of the like social justice community or whatever, you know, we have been, I don't know about targeted, but we've had all of their techniques of like, you're a li liar, you're disingenuous and like, you know, shady tactics and shit trained on us for all this time. Now we're just watching them train those tactics on each other. And we're just sitting back yeah. and watching, like, now you're seeing what we've had to deal with for all of exactly. these years. The very, <laughs> the, very tactic, the very tactics they're now decrying are the tactics they defended when they were used against us. Oh, it's not a problem when it's used against us, but now it's used against me. Oh, no, it's so terrible. Yeah. Right, like, you would see you Bering lying and lying and then Sargon in the comment section. Great video, fantastic. Christie's horrible or whatever. And it's like, you, do you even care about whether what's in this video is true? No, you don't. It's just the right enemies, isn't it? But now each other is the enemy. And we get to watch this and just be like, I hope you enjoy your own bullshit. <laughs> well, Tim, when you're, on Worski's, when you're on Worski's stream, do not say I posted the link to ED to a group. Um, because, again, yeah, it I've... didn't happen. I have to be. Don't say that on a worst excuse. I'll tell him you're interested. Even if you well, say it's not you true. Really yeah, thanks. thanks. Have to be careful about what I say <laughs> That's a amongst thing. like, because it, it's like a circular firing squad, and I feel like you know, I'm a bit, I'm kind of on the outside of the circle looking in, but if I step forward too much, I'll suddenly be in the circle, and I'll be like, no. <laughs> okay, oh God! Um, now I'm part of this. You don't want to be the biscuit in the soggy biscuit game. You just don't. <laughs> Oh, God. Changing topics. Hey, Mary, uh, Chris Demos <laughs> to uh, Joey Durjo as well. Thank you. That made me smile. Happy Christmas to everybody. The winteriest holiday of the winter. <laughs> you guys, oh, this you're going to turn winter in my favorite time of year. You guys in the live chat. Um, well, is there any other goss? Well, I, oh, well, sorry, I, was say, I quite like the fact that I, I came up with Christianity for your religion, which I thought was quite cool. <laughs> Um, is there any other part of this shit show that we're not talking about? I mean, there's other characters involved. I mean, this could literally go on for hours. But maybe the question is, like, do you think it's over now? Like, do you think we've seen the worst of it? Is it now kind of picking up the pieces and seeing what's left? It's never over. We well, see, I'm planning, to. I'm planning on um, planting some seeds of doubt on the Waski stream and starting a whole new round of, of infighting. So not over yet. Yeah, did you hear that? Well, yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's maybe, not true. Come up with a rumor, right? Just come up with like a really fake rumor, but one that kind of fits in with the narrative that's going around, and just try mm. and start. Oh, whole, did we talk yeah. about? Did we talk about the trolling? Your successful trolling of the alt right, Tim. I did not watch the video. I'm sorry. What was it? You're so lame. God. So it's because um, yes. I don't like. I don't. I mean, I'm not very. I'm not just not interested in the braving ruin guy. Like he, he was no, on no, stream, no. and I was like, "Can't be No, Tim, you've misunderstood completely. She's talking Have about I? your trolling of the alt right on Twitter. What? Did, I can't remember what I did. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I did that. All right. Well, okay. 
So at the start of the Kraut stuff, before he took down his channel and sort of said he wasn't coming back and all that very, very dramatic stuff, uh, Tim um, like uh, wrote a tweet saying that or the, the SJW feminist community on YouTube was welcoming Kraut with open arms. What do you remember? Oh uh, yeah. No, I said like. Um... Oh, I can't remember what the fuck the tweet was. Something about him being an ally and being like, Kraut has been welcomed by our community with open arms. Like, he's really a fantastic SJW ally. Like, <laughs> But I'll tell the story, and then you can read the thread because there's some good answers in there. But anyway, I was listening to this. Listening yeah, Chris, to this Christy, live stream. Christy, you're going to need to tell Tim the story of the thing that he did. Exactly. <laughs> you can tell how plugged in I am. <laughs> Right. So anyway, the story is that, yeah, Tim wrote this tweet and then kind of give, gave me a nudge and said, hey, you know, I'm kind of trying to troll Kraut a little bit. You want to go post some thoughts? And he, a few people started just adding really ironic statements. Well, um, on a live stream talking about this whole thing, they were trying to discredit Kraut with what Kevin said earlier, just sort of hurling the name SJW at him and his sort of cultural Marxist tactics or whatever. And one of the guys said then something along the lines of, now I'm not sure this is true, but, you know, uh, Kraut has been welcomed with open arms into the SJW community, at least by Tim Blake. But if you go look at Tim Blake's Twitter or go look at Christy Winter's tweets, uh, you'll see there that they're praising Kraut. And I just started laughing my ass off uncontrollably. And I tagged you into the damn video. I queued it up for you. So all you had to do was like Sorry. listen to a total four minutes. And you couldn't even be bothered to do that. I'm trying to be... I didn't know it was your video. The screen cap had a picture of like... Uh, braving ruins, um, you know, like picture thing, and I was like, ah, oh, that guy skip. I thought it was I thought it was a hangout with braving ruin in it, and I was like, I can't be bothered watching that. But it was your that video. Was, oh, sorry. But you, you do like it when people say your name. That's why I tag you into it, man. I guess that's true. I found the thread here. <laughs> Lauren Southern said, "Can someone explain to me what kraut is?" And I said. <laughs> Crowton T is an anti-racist, anti-alt-right friend of mine. He's good friends with me, Christy Winters, Music Man Mike, Christiosity, and the rest of the YouTube social justice crowd. He's been welcomed to our group with open arms. <laughs> Mike was said, remember that time he made an hour-long video about how cool we all are and how he really looks up to us as thinkers and people? <laughs> Keep going, it's good. Christy said, Kraut is German for intersectional feminist pro-social justice secret antifa <laughs> activist. <laughs> Branting feminist. He's our dear friend and male feminist ally. He does long videos to explain why the patriarchy is bad and how to go about dismantling it, as well as making videos to welcome refugees to Europe, no matter where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I, I, I asked, I said to Steve Shives, I was like, could you tweet out how you love... Crouch, but he, he didn't do it. It was <laughs> dust. It that? would have been fantastic. Can you pin that tweet to your Twitter? Uh, I guess so. I've got an old. I've got a blog post pinned, but it's a bit old now. So okay, I'll do that. I had one there that you didn't read out that I thought was quite funny too. Oh, oh it would have been brilliant if Steve would have tweeted out. Um, Crouch and T is the one account I will never bluff. That would be, <laughs> that would be amazing. I was like. If we truly want to destroy Kraut's cred, got to get Steve Shaves just to tweet respect for Kraut, you know. Kraut's a lovely man. I love his videos. I feel like, he's dead. He's dead. Leave him alone. Yeah. He's gone. So anyway, awesome troll. So you'll have to get the video now. You'll have to make a little um, documentary of the time that you managed to troll the alt-right. Yeah, and, and and Tim Tim agrees with you that it was a great troll now that he remembers what the fuck it was. <laughs> yeah. I just I forgot I my own brilliance, I guess. <laughs> the the well, responses I were so I kept checking for them. I forget how awesome I am. It's a big problem. Yeah, Tim Tim comes up with so many great awesome ideas. He forgets the awesome idea he had two minutes ago. That's how regular the awesome ideas are. Exactly. Genius. He's like Mozart. Yes. Back to him. A braving Rowan tried to troll me, and it went horribly for him, which was good. But, uh, so my mate has a list of uh, sorry, my mate has a list of shit ideas. For instance, um, uh, an Uber robber, where you call an Uber driver out to a re re remote location and then try to rob them. Which, of course, what? if you use what? Uber, you know that you don't pay. That's why it's a shit idea. It's a really shit idea. Oh, okay. Or crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing hits like mob hits and stuff. 
<laughs> anyway, so it's a very ironic list of shit ideas. And when he has, when he has them, he writes them down. So this hilarious. is descended into madness now. <laughs> I'm trying to find my troll awesome. of braving ruin, but I, I can't find it. Well, how are you guys Emmett? doing for time? Because I know Kevin, you said you wanted to have a break before you guys. Yeah, you want to plug your uh, your next appearance? Um, next well, we don't plug it. What do you mean? Well, there's no point plugging it because we don't know who's going to be on, and we don't know what we're talking about. So, yeah, I need to ask Andy to who's going to come have on. He's been busy this week. He's he's kind of been on the busy side this week, so he might be all talked out, to be honest. Yeah, he wasn't last week. Last week he was hungover. Mm, I'm hungover. Mm. I said that, right? Yeah. I was hungover. Wasn't Andy hungover as well or something? I don't know. Nah, his buddy Chris or whatever. Also, um, I've still got well, the if... rundown of the stuff that... You talked about Christy. Another one said Wizard of Cause. Side player I don't know much about. So you wrote that. Does anyone? Kraut Apology. Yeah, I don't know really who that is. His I, apology I, is rejected. I think, he leads you. I, think, I think we've run out of steam, let's be honest. Well, yeah, I think, Jeff yeah, we did wear much. a hat that said dumbass on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta talk about I'm that. Screenshot, I've screenshot that for future thumbnail purposes. That's definitely happening. <laughs> did you guys I, see. I was rather merciless. I tweeted at him that it should have read liar. <laughs> I actually thought his video was a bit over the top. He was like, I lied. Oh. I'm a liar. I've betrayed everybody. I'm a dumbass. Interspersed between defending himself and saying you did nothing wrong. So it was kind of like kind of a mixed bag, you know? I'm not just that, but he kind of lied again in the video as well, which was a bit annoying. Did he? Yeah. I, no, I don't, yeah. Oh, shit. I, what I really should have done, because I took notes on some of the videos, on some of the videos. I really should have taken that, because my notebook's upstairs. I should have brought it to this, really. That would have helped, wouldn't it? You think about I'm that sorry. in like five minutes so before we go up. I found my troll of Braving Room. So I said something like the Outriders is the garbage, and I don't, I don't know what the hell I said. And then he tweeted me. He quote tweeted me and said, no, Timmy, you misunderstand. I genuinely, you and your crew, to fight the alt-right. It will be highly entertaining. And I said, I will fight you, but only if you use better grammar. Otherwise, it will be too confusing. But I genuinely, <laughs> me and my crew, to fight the alt-right. Let's fighting love. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was great. I genuinely, to you, fighting the alt-right. Uh, what? Ah, uh, okay. Mr. Dapperton. Mr. Dapperton's in the chat. What a fucking bellend. Oh, he's a dick. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Oh. Anyway. We were going to get yeah, going he's, anyway, so... He's, he's a, oh, I just want to briefly mention Mr. Dapperton. He's an ANCAP, and therefore a fucking idiot. Sorry. Right. And he has that, he has that picture of him, like, holding bags of money, and there's, like, naked women in his bed. Yeah. Or something. Yes, he's got, like, the these one. massive abs. Yeah, he used to, he used to be <laughs> ANCAP. And now he's Mr. Dapperton. To great, red, to, to great Red Menace, Kilroy is not off. It's still going on. No, for now. Question. For now. For now yes. Anyways, if so, if we conclude, did we establish what doxing is? Let us. Okay, let's uh, just briefly, um, some random geek in the chat wants us to shout out, and I think it's okay because he's, he's good at um, uh, it. He's having a uh, hangout with Lonely Wolf uh, 1980 later on. Um, oh, cool. Like Last Jedi. So, go and watch that because it's probably going to be better than me and Tim, to be honest. Let's 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 be brutal. Sure. You know, I think what has happened tonight is that Tim, you've been established as uh, the Judge Judy, <laughs> Judge Judy and Executioner. And you can oh, and, in cases. and you can bang my gavel any guy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, whenever there's a doxing case, the parties have to come, or people on their behalf have to come and present their cases to you and you will have to adjudicate. I think that's a whole new direction your channel is going to take in 2018. Hmm. But I think okay, our conclusion about doxing could be that there is a semantic technical idea of doxing and the one doxing that everybody always agrees on is when you leak or show private information that wasn't previously known to people. I think everybody agrees that that particular thing is doxing. But then there is also the idea of like reappropriating information that you could potentially find publicly or maybe out there in some context and then 
putting it in a new context or researching or gathering a bunch of information, public or private, to use against somebody at some oh, point. Tim, yeah. Tim, don't bring up appropriation. We've only just got over their meltdown over fucking <laughs> Halloween costumes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> True. Oh. Appropriation of information. These feminists are out of control. But, but I think, like, we've got that whole conversation around what that technically is and is not. And the one thing we can all agree on is leaking private information is doxing. So that is definitely a dox. And then there are kind of like some gradients of whether something is or isn't a doxing depending on public and private. And then there is the whole ethical conversation around what actions that are or are not doxing but are similar to doxing are moral or ethical or the right things to do. And that's, and generally conversations that I can do online about doxing, they, they move over into the ethical moral argument at some point yeah <laughs> i just blocked can, can I that <laughs> Prick. <laughs> but that's kind of my 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 conclusion on the on the issue i guess is that there are shades and nuances to it question. let me ask you a question first to get you on the record the uh, people who were in the people who were in their discord server were in there knowing they were members of a private group and um, of course, most of the people in that server had nothing to do with the events we're discussing tonight. When those names of the members were released, hello. Yeah, I did. You hear my question? No, Chris. No, did you cut off? Oh, dang it. I don't know. I, I didn't mute my, anything. Anyway, so, okay. Uh, the question was, uh, the server was private. Mm -hmm. The people thought they were having private conversations. When those names, the membership, when that was leaked, was that a dox? In my view, yes, it would be. But I know that hyper-technical people will start going on and on about public versus private. But I think... You know, researching information and putting it together in one place for me, I'm like it's so like whether or not it's doxing, it's like it's doxing type practice. You know, I don't know if this, this is not being discussed in like a court of law. In a court of law, I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a lawyer would be able to argue that it wasn't or something. But I at least think judge, just what's that? What does Judge Tim say? I don't like. We're not in a court of law. We're, we're on the fucking internet. It's the wrong thing to do. And I would class that as like in, in the sense of like things occurring online, I would say, yeah, that's like doxing activity. I would, I would call it that. But if I took it to a court of law, maybe it wouldn't stand up. So fuck oh, my Tim. life. Yeah, I'm just asking Tim, for your Tim, you Why am I alive? Oof. What am I doing here? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. And on that bombshell, <laughs> we're five minutes away at the top of the hour. Kevin, is there any last closing thoughts you want to leave on besides uh, people in the in the chat you don't like? Um, no, basically, I just want to say I blocked Mr. Dapperton. That that was funny. And uh, fuck you, Dapperton. You are <laughs> for, a total for, prick. His crime was being Mr. Dapperton. No, no. I've, I've, I've researched a lot of his videos, and he's fucking scum. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh my God! Well, I think yeah, Kevin. Guys... Kevin has much higher tolerance for that Go kind ahead, of thing. Tim. Sorry, no, that's all. <laughs> I do, but I, I occasionally get my steam out by by banning them on other people's channels because I've got the power to, and I will abuse that power willfully. You know? Don't cross Kev. Well, technically, cross he didn't cross me. He just he just put out opinions that are really shitty. So, right. Don't piss off the moderator. That's the All right, we're done here. We are. So on that, Kevin's opinion on moderation of chat's bombshell. Um, thank you guys for your time and attention. I appreciate you watching all the way to Hangout. Well, can I just uh, say, I, I, I admire your, I admire your um, dedication to the partridge bit. That's, that's class. <laughs> and on that partridge bombshell, go on. I've been Christy. Kevin's been awesome. Tim's been mostly awesome. No, Tim's up great. Been awesome. You guys <laughs> in the audience burn. have been awesome. Goodbye from me and goodbye from Kevin and Tim. Say goodbye, Kevin and Tim.
Goodbye, Goodbye Kevin, Kevin and Tim. Tim. Ha 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 ha. Ah. 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 I need to do that. <laughs>